Samsung SmartThings has gone through a ton of evolutions over the years. SmartThings is essentially Samsung's smart home ecosystem, with the SmartThings app at its centre and the ability to control and automate a series of Samsung built and third party devices. SmartThings is actually quite a robust ecosystem and was one of the first consumer focused smart home setups out there. Are you new to SmartThings? You've come to the right place. In this guide, I'll go over all the basics of using SmartThings and the SmartThings app. I'm not necessarily going to dive into specific niche scenarios or situations, so if that's what you're looking for, you may need to look elsewhere. But I will run through through setting up devices and using the app in general. If you're looking for a specific topic, check out the description for chapters. If you like this video, please hit the like button and subscribe to the channel. It really helps support my work and I would appreciate that support. The first thing you'll want to learn how to do is navigate the SmartThings app. This app is installed on Samsung phones by default, but it's also available on the Google Play and iOS stores to other devices. When you first open the app, you'll need to agree to Samsung Terms of Use, but after that, opening the app will reveal a list of your devices, if you have any, sorted into rooms. Scroll down to quickly control devices in your home. At the top of the display, you'll have a hamburger menu to access specific rooms, devices, scenes, automations, and so on. We'll go into what these things do later, though some of them will be self-explanatory. Outside of the menu, you'll also also have a button to add a device, scene, automation or something else, and another button to edit the SmartThings home screen and to manage your location data. To get the most out of SmartThings, you'll want a SmartThings hub. I only have a second generation hub, however there is a third generation hub, and if you're buying a new one, that's the one you should get. The hub essentially talks to all of your other smart home devices, allowing you to control all those devices straight through the SmartThings app. Setting up the hub is relatively easy. To do so, open up the SmartThings app, then hit the Add Device button. Then, select the Wi-Fi hub option from the list that shows up and select your model. Then, follow the on-screen instructions, which will include plugging the hub into power and into your Wi-Fi router. If you just went through adding a hub, then you already pretty much know how to add other devices. It'll start with the plus button on the top right of the screen, after which you'll hit the add device button. Now, it's hard to run through the exact process because it will vary depending on the device that you're adding. Some devices will allow you to simply scan a QR code, while others will be a bit more involved. For example, for this smart switch, you'll plug the switch in, then either scroll down to the outlet button or hit the scan nearby button, and it'll find the outlet. You can then add it to a room and it'll be available to add in automations and scenes. For other devices, you'll want to find the device type and follow the on-screen instructions. Scenes basically allow you to set the state of multiple devices with the touch of one button or with one voice control. For example, you could have a good night scene that sets all your lights to off except for a nightlight which turns on and your thermostat set to a low temperature. Or you could have a movie watching scene that dims all the lights in the living room, turns on the compatible TV and so on. Creating a scene is pretty easy. Open the app and hit the plus button on the top right of the SmartThings home screen. Then press the scene button. You'll be able to name the scene and set the state of devices for the scene. Your scene will appear at the top of the SmartThings home screen, where you can quickly and easily enable it. It'll also show up in your list of scenes. In your list of scenes, you can edit how the scenes work or delete scenes that you no longer want to use. Automations are a little different than scenes in that they can be used for one device or multiple and usually happen without your interaction. In other words, you can set your smart home devices to react to things like your phone's location, the time of day, the status of another device or something else. Creating an automation in SmartThings is pretty easy. To do so, hit the plus button on the top right of the home screen and hit the automation button. Automations in SmartThings are laid out similar to if this then that, which means that if something happens, it can trigger another thing to happen. The settings you use will depend on what you want to automate. Automate. For example, as the trigger you could set the time, status of a device, location of users, mode of your home, or the weather. I'm going to use my location. There are other settings that you can use too, such as how long you have to have been away to trigger the automation. Hit the save button when you've set up your trigger, then tap the plus button under then and set the status of the devices you want to react to the trigger. For example, I'll set the living room lights to turn on. One of the great things about SmartThings is that you can set multiple conditions that have to be met for an automation to run. So in this example, I could set that when I come home and it's past sunset, the lights will turn on, preventing the lights from turning on when there's light out. You may have to experiment a little to get the hang of automations, but with a bit of experience you'll get there. 
If you live with others, you probably want them to be able to access and control your smart home devices too. Thankfully, it's relatively easy to add others to your smart home, and considering the fact that the SmartThings app is available on all kinds of devices, they don't have to use a Samsung phone. To add another member to your smart home, open the app and hit the plus button on the top right of the SmartThings home screen. Then press the member button. You'll then be able to send an invitation through an email or display a QR code on your screen that they can scan and access right away. You can use your voice to control many aspects of your smart home, and thankfully it's not limited to just Samsung's Bixby. By default, Bixby can control SmartThings devices without you having to do anything. But you can enable access to Google Assistant in the Google Assistant app and Alexa in the Alexa app. To add the ability to use Google Assistant, open the Google Home app and hit the plus button on the top left hand corner. Then tap the Setup Device button and Works with Google. You'll find SmartThings on the list of services that pop up. Sign into your Samsung account and you should be good to go. You'll then be able to add Smart SmartThings devices to rooms in your Google Home setup, and then control them with your voice. To add Alexa support, open up the Alexa app, tap the Devices tab, and then hit your Smart Home Skills button. Press to enable Smart Home Skills, search for SmartThings, and sign into your account. You should then be good to go. Thanks so much for watching this video, and again, please hit the like button and subscribe if it was helpful to you. My name is Christian, and I'll see you next time. See ya.